Hello everyone, I welcome you all in the third lecture on topic simple and compound interest. Where today also my focus will be on building concepts required further to solve different types of questions which we will see in the coming lectures. Now the concept which I am going to discuss today, effective rate of interest, is very crucial and important for solving many questions based on compound interest calculation. Students who wants to solve the question based on compound interest without any formula, who wants to learn the formula free approach, it is going to be very crucial for them. Also, I will discuss one problem using which I will clear your doubts on how to find out number of compounding period while doing CI calculations. So that is the agenda. Let us start. Uh, now the first thing which I want to talk about is the concept of effective rate of interest. Now what effective rate of interest is, we will understand in a while. But before that, let me show you the data which we are going to use to understand the concept. So what I have done, I have uh, kept rate as 10% per annum, compounded annually and the time duration is 2 years. So for this data, we are going to do the calculation of simple and compound interest. First, let us talk about simple interest. Now in simple interest, as I mentioned, if rate is 10% per annum, per annum means at the end of 1 year, the rate applicable is 10%. And time duration is 2 years, right? So, in order to calculate effective rate of interest, so what effective rate of interest means? Overall rate, overall rate for T time duration. Now, in simple interest, what you have to understand that simple interest is linear in nature. Linear means if you are getting 10% for 2 years. So, as the name says, simple interest means you have to simply add the two interest values. Since we are doing calculation for 2 years, that is why I am going to add 10% twice. And once you add them, we will get the effective rate of interest for 2 years. The overall rate for 2 years. Now, if you want to formulate a way to calculate effective rate of interest directly, uh, what you could have done, you could have directly multiply the two values. 10% per annum into 2. So if you multiply the two numbers, you will get the effective rate of interest directly. This could be another way. But I want you to understand the visual approach as well. Since I am getting 10% at the end of every year, so in 2 years, effective rate of interest is going to be 20% per annum. And now let us try to understand the same calculation in case of compound interest. In the last lecture, I hope you can remember, I told you that compound interest is an application of successive percentage change. So for the calculation of effective rate of interest, I have to look at these two changes successively. Since the number of years are two and we are updating the principle, compounded means update the principle. We are doing the interest calculation at the end of every year. So the number of compounding periods are going to be two. And for each compounding period, the rate of interest would be 10% per annum. So just write down 10% for the two successive cycles. So for these two compounding periods, I have to calculate the effective rate of interest. And I can do this calculation very easily by using the concept of successive percentage change. I have the values of two changes. In fact, if I look at the two values carefully, I can see that these are easy set of values. And therefore, I can use the formula very easily here is successive formula. Let's write down the formula first. A plus B plus A into B upon 100 equals to C. So in case of CI, we have to do what kind of addition? Successive addition. And to do the successive addition, this is the formula. Uh, what is the value of A? You would say, sir, value of A is plus 10. What is the value of B? It is also plus 10 because the two rates are same for the two compounding periods. So let's plug in the values. 10 plus 10 plus 10 into 10 by 100 equals to C. After solving this, you will get the value of effective rate of interest as 21%, you know, in 2 years, in 2 compounding periods. Now, I want you to look at the two values of effective rate of interest. In SI, it is 20% per annum, while in CI, it is 21% per annum. In fact, if you compare the two values, you get to know that CI is more rewarding than SI, isn't it? In case of CI, I am getting how much extra? I am getting 1% extra. So this 1% is nothing but the difference. 
the difference between SI and CI for how many years? You would say, sir, this is for two years because we have done calculation for two years. So this is the difference between CI and SI for two years. And this is something which I'm going to use in many questions of simple and compound interest. So I hope through this, you were able to understand what effective rate of interest is and how to do the calculation of this in the two cases, simple and compound interest. Now to check whether you have actually understood the previous concept or not, uh, let us use one example using which we'll try understanding one more important concept related to compound interest. What is the question? Which of the following will be a better option for an investor who wants to invest his money for one year? So there is an investor who wants to invest his money for a duration of one year. If you look at the three options, what would you realize that rate applicable is same. It's 40% per annum. The difference is if you look at this particular term compounded annually, compounded semi-annually, compounded quarterly. It means in the first case, the interest will be calculated at the end of every year. In the second one, it will be calculated at the end of every six months. Semi-annually means after the end of every six months. And in the third one, compounded quarterly, it means the calculation of interest will be done on every quarter after every three months. And this is what is going to change the calculation in the three options. Let's look at the three options one by one. The first option, rate applicable is 40% per annum. So before I move forward, I want you to understand what 40% per annum means. 40% per annum means that you will get this rate at the end of one year, at the end of 12 months. So one year can also be represented as 12 months. But what if I do the calculation in six months? Is it going to be same? You would say no, sir. Since here, I'm doing the calculation at the end of six months, I have to change the value of rate as well. See the relation, how six is related to 12? You would say, sir, six is half of 12. So rate also needs to be halved. So if you halve the rate, you will get 20% for six months. If I do the same calculation for three months, you will say, sir, for three months, Again, try to find the relation how 3 is related to 12. You would say, sir, 3 is 1 by 4. And what will be 1 by 4 of 40? It will be 10. So rate applicable at the end of 3 months is going to be 10%. So through this, what I want you to understand, the value of rate will keep on changing as I change the time period. And this is something which is going to be very crucial in the case of compound interest. So this is one thing which I want you to understand before I uh, proceed forward. Okay, let's come back to this case. Rate is 40% per annum. Time period is one year. So for a time period of one year, if I ask you, for this time period of one year, how many number of compounding periods are going to be there? So can I say that in the first option, the number of compounding periods are going to be one only? Since time period is one year and we are doing the calculation of compound interest, on annual basis. Therefore, in the first option, the number of compounding periods are going to be one only. And here comes the important question. What is the rate of interest? Is it going to be 40% or something else? You would say, sir, since we are doing the calculation of interest at the end of one year or at the end of 12 months, so rate applicable would be full. It would be 40% only. So no need to change the value of rate. Since change is happening for only once, there is no need to use successive percentage change. Effective rate would be directly 40% only. Okay, let's look at the second option. In the second option, again, rate is same. It's 40% per annum. But the difference is here, we are doing compounding. We are going to do the calculation of interest on half yearly basis. Compounded half yearly. Semi-annually, half yearly, both means the same, right? Don't get confused. So let's see what are the changes we are going to look at. Again, time duration is one year. But this time, since we are going to do the calculation of interest at the end of half year, so can you tell me how many number of compounding periods are going to be there? You would say, sir, this time number of compounding periods would be two. One and two. Why two? Because if you look at one year, one year means 12 months. So in 12 months, how many periods of six months? You would say, sir, there are going to be two periods, isn't it? And since here we are doing calculation at the end of every six months, it is understood that rate applicable cannot be 40% in this case. It has to be changed. 
since we are doing calculation in every six months rate needs to be halved so what is the rate applicable in the second option rate applicable would be 20 percent now if you look at this setup carefully here you will find two changes which are happening successively where the value of first and second change is same so what will be the effective rate of interest in the second option for the calculation of same here i have to apply the concept of successive percentage change let's apply the formula a plus b plus a into b upon 100 equals to c what are the values of a and b you would say sir 20 and 20 same right and if i do this calculation i'll get 44 percent this time so can i say for the second option yes rate applicable or effective rate applicable would be 44 percent although rate value is 40 percent for this case also but the effective rate of interest in the second option would be 44 percent and what is the reason reason is this since number of compounding periods are two the rate applicable changes from 40 to 44 percent so what i want you to understand if you look at the two cases carefully the rate applicable is same the time period is also same the only difference is in the first case we are doing the calculation of interest on annual basis while in the second case we were doing the calculation of interest after every six months and this changes everything in the first case effective rate of interest was 40 percent while in the second case it is 44 percent so can you see the more the number of compounding period the more interest will be accumulated isn't it and it will be more clear to you when we discuss this third option okay so for the third option what is the data for the third option also rate applicable is 50 percent right what is the change the change is here we are going to do compounding on quarterly basis quarterly means after every three months so can i say that in the same period of one year the number of compounding periods are going to be four because if you divide one year in a period of three months how many periods of three months are going to be there you would say sir four can i say that the number of compounding periods in the third option are going to be four where rate applicable will not be 40 percent it's kind of understood now why because here we are doing the calculation after the end of every three months and if we do the calculation of interest at the end of every three months rate applicable would be 10 percent so for each compounding period the rate applicable would be 10 percent now how will you calculate effective rate of interest you will say sir for the calculation of effective rate of interest i have to apply successive here okay uh, pick any two changes look at these two changes so if i apply the formula a plus b in the two changes i'm assuming this as a and this as b you will say sir this would be 10 plus 10 plus 10 into 10 upon 100 and when i solve this i'll get 21 percent here now, what i want you to understand if for the first two changes the effective rate applicable is 21 percent can i say that for the next two changes also since rate is same it is going to be 21 percent so can i visualize the same situation as two compounding periods of 21 percent each you would say sir why not and again what i can do i can apply the same formula let's consider this as a and b so a plus b plus a into b upon 100 21 plus 21 is 42 isn't it and 21 square we all know it's 441 divided by 100 so when you solve this this would be 42 now just put a decimal after two digits 4.41 that would be 46.41 now what i want you to realize effective rate of interest in third option is 46.41 percent look at this same rate in the second case in the second case it was 44 percent while in the first case it was only 40 percent and what is the reason why effective rate of interest is more in the third option because the number of compounding periods are more here and this is what i want you to realize by comparing the three options the more the number of compounding periods the more the interest please realize that rate and time period is same for the three options the only difference is the number of compounding periods so more the number of compounding periods 
the more the interest that is something which you have to keep in your mind now right. another thing which i want you to realize is if you look at the value of rate in the three cases okay let's call them r1 r2 in the th uh, third case let's call them r1 r2 r3 and r4 it is very easy to define these rates right see how uh, in the first case rate applicable was 40 percent per annum and we are doing the calculation of interest on annual basis since we are doing it at the end of every year so rate applicable would be 40 percent only no need to change anything in the second case also rate value is 40 percent per annum but if you want to find out how to define this rate how to find out that whether it is 20 percent 10 percent or something else you have to just focus on this part compounded semi-annually in case of half yearly you are going to divide the rate with Two. and this would be the rate applicable for the compounding periods 20 percent in the third case rate applicable was 40 percent but since we are going to do the calculation of interest in every quarter quarter means four so divide this by four only so 40 by 4 will give you the rate applicable in the compounding periods so this is another important thing which i want you to realize so, which of the following will be the better option? You would say, sir, the more the number of compounding periods, the more the interest. So, obviously, third option, any given day would be the better option. Since rate is same, time period is same in each and every option, only difference is here. So, wherever we are doing interest calculation early, that would be the best option, third option. So, the answer of this particular question would be option third. The investor should go for the third option. So, with this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you were able to understand everything. If not, please write down your queries in the comment box. In the next lecture, we are going to start off with different types of questions which can be asked from this particular topic, simple and compound interest. So stay tuned. Thank you and have a nice day.